The first time he hit me, I blamed myself. I'd been too annoying, too lazy. I deserved the blow. But it kept happening. It went from one time to once a month to every day. And every time I tell myself, it must be my fault. He would never, never accept those millions of times when he did. I think I realized pretty early that this was wrong, that the marks he left on my body were not of love, but I had nowhere to run to. He trapped me with him so he could beat me, berate me, throw me around until my body, my brain was broken. But I had nowhere to run to. Not just because he kept me in chains, but because everyone I turned to turned me away. Because no one wants to listen to people like me until we are dead. And these experiences, these pains, are not my own. They belong to the hundreds of millions of domestic abuse victims that have had every fiber of their being shredded and scorned. But you and I already know that domestic abuse is an issue. We've seen the PSAs, the articles, the speeches. We are not blind to the crime that is intimate abuse. But too often in society, we choose to ignore the glaring red sign right in front of us. And in this case, that glaring red sign is a collective cry of those who suffer at the hands of their one and only. And we may not be outright encouraging domestic abuse, but by turning a blind eye, we enable it. So today, let us remove that blindfold to see how we ignore domestic abuse. Then we will observe the impacts of such neglect and finally extend a hand to find some ways to prevent such dismissal because we should be able to save someone before they are dead. Now, I'd love to say that people are acting blind to domestic abuse because they aren't aware it exists. However, the concept of taking physical, sexual, emotional, economic, or psychological actions to maintain control over an intimate partner is foreign to few and all too familiar to many. We may be able to sit here comfortably and listen to some uncomfortable speeches, but with every minute that ticks by, 20 more people will fall victim to this crime. And as the National Library of Medicine found, one in four women and one in seven men will face crushing abuse. And that one person, that could be one of us. One of us standing on the other end of a violent fist. That's how common this is. But even though it could be any one of us out in the street, any one of us here in this room facing domestic abuse, the world is not kind to those victims. From victim blaming to blatantly ignoring to the 60% of domestic abuse cases that are dropped, we are not sympathetic at all. And because of such cruelty, we lose nearly 17,000 people per year to the monsters that our society has left them with like a lamb to the slaughter. But when we send a lamb to the slaughter, we expect it to get killed. However, death is not the only ending that domestic abuse victims face. The American Psychiatric Association asserts that intimate abuse can result in depression, PTSD, strangulation, alcoholism, and much more. If the victims are not killed, then they face years of agony from the aftershocks of the battles they fought, battles in which they were unable to fight back, battles in which they were preyed upon, battles where they had no one standing by their side. Because regardless of how much we may already know about domestic abuse, we will never understand what such a harrowing experience feels like unless we unfortunately happen to live it. And until that happens, we have the ability to continuously ignore this issue because we just don't get it. The fear, the isolation, the agony, the desperation for escape, that's the side we don't see. Because a home that houses domestic abuse is a home that hides a massacre. And by turning away, we are leaving those victims to fend for themselves. We are leaving those victims to die, physically or metaphorically.
because no one can walk out of such an experience without some part of them having been killed. That is the impact we leave behind by leaving them behind. But what right do I have to talk about this? What right do I have to blame the world for turning away when it's not as though I was hurt by it? To start, let's get one thing straight. I am not pointing fingers because society's choice to abandon abuse victims hurt me. I am urging you to face this issue because I am a person who chose to abandon someone. In the summer of last year, just a night at the dinner table and my mom is checking her messages on WeChat as Asian parents tend to do. And then she turns to me and I'll never forget the guilt in her voice as she tells me, your cousin was shoved by her husband at three months pregnant and she ripped open her arm. And she's in the ER to get stitches and see if her unborn child is still alive. And that one act, that one push could have permanently damaged my cousin, but I wasn't surprised that it happened because for months, he started yelling, blaming her, belittling her. All the signs were there. I knew all the signs were there, but I didn't think to reach out. And just as I managed to ignore my own cousin in her hour of need, our world turns away from those victims when they're on their knees, pleading for us to just look them in the eye to listen. So here I am begging for you to just listen because it hurts when someone you love gets hurt. And it hurts when you could have done something, anything to help them, but you chose to keep your eyes closed and your mouth shut. And as much as I wish I could say that I have a solution to it all, there's no feasible way to eradicate domestic abuse, but that's not a reason for us to neglect those victims. So first and foremost, let's address the system. It's clear that our laws are flawed if we are letting millions slip through the cracks when they could have been saved. And the best way to fill those cracks is to make it easier for abuse victims to escape. From regulations that require thorough examinations before jumping to conclusions, to broadening conditions for restraining order so people won't have to get hurt before escaping hurt, there are so many places where all law enforcement could be more open-minded to make it easier for so many more victims. But change isn't only up to the authorities. The University College London studied a community to see if education on domestic abuse improved motivation to respond to victims. And they found that it not only increased the likelihood of support, but also taught people how they could respond. By just teaching this subject, we may be able to rescue so many more people. But what if we don't have the power to change the rules? I mean, I'm just 16. I don't have the legislative power to fix all these things and I can't white man my way to the top like certain presidents can. But I am not useless and we are not useless just because we do not have the authority because with every person that opens their eyes to the signs around us, that learns the signs around us, that addresses the signs when they surround us, there may be one more person, a little more safe. But of course, we don't have to. In fact, we could come up with a hundred million excuses to ignore domestic abuse. But let me tell you, it's pretty damn horrible to walk away. And it's pretty damn horrible to be walked away from. So let's listen to what famed singer, songwriter, and actress Lady Gaga once sang. I've got a hundred million reasons to walk away, but I just need one good one to stay. So let us, let all those who suffer, all those who cry, be our reason to turn back and to stay.